Hi, this is Dennis from Cybercraft. Today we're going to be doing a Network Plus practice test. This is the official CompTIA practice test for the Network Plus. So we're going to go ahead and do these questions. We did this for Security Plus, and I'm going to go ahead and explain my thought process now for the Network Plus test as well. So let's go ahead and jump in. Now, remember with these, I want to go through some specific techniques. Specifically, I'm going to read the question, rephrase the question, read the answers, and then read the question again. So which of the following should a junior security administrator recommend implementing to mitigate malicious network activity? Okay, junior security administrator recommend to implement malicious network activity. This is irrelevant, uh, just security administrator. I don't know why they have junior. They'll put a lot of extra words in here to, to confuse you. So IPS, honeypot, SEM, VPN. All right, malicious network activity. Well, one of these, I mean, a lot of these are different techniques. This is more of a detection tool, security information event management. It's more for log analysis. Uh, VPN isn't going to protect against network activity. That's going to encrypt traffic sent over the internet. A honeypot can distract attackers, but it wouldn't directly mitigate the activity itself. I think an intrusion prevention system would be probably the correct answer here. So. All right, and I'm just writing this down on my notepad here. All right, so which of the following ports is a secure port or a secure protocol? So this is just understanding your ports and protocols, 20, 23, 443, or 445. Okay, so 443 is HTTPS, so it's definitely Charlie. That's pretty simple. All right, which of the following antenna types would most likely be used in a network repeater that is housed in a central point in a home office. Omnidirectional, para parabolic, high gain, patch. Okay, so this is a, a standard router antenna. I, I think a following types would be used in a network repeater or a repeater that is housed in a central point in a home office. I don't think repeater matters. I think it's just, though it could, but I don't think that would matter. I think just omnidirectional would be the best. I mean, these are this is a <laughs> this is more of an industrial type antenna. Uh, so I think omnidirectional. Pretty simple answer here. These are pretty straightforward so far. All right, network engineer wants to improve network availability. Which of the following should the engineer install in the main closet? Network engineer wants to improve network availability. Which of the following should the network install? engineer install in the main closet. So if we want to do availability, we want a server cluster, a load balancer, or uninterrupted power supply. All of those provide availability. Okay, uninterruptible power supply, that's what that's one. Gaseous fire suppression system. Oh, okay. Uh, I thought it was gonna be like a gas powered server or something. A lockable cabinet voltage monitor. So I think ups uninterrupted power supply has to be the right answer there. I already thought of answers ahead of time. I thought that this would be, and, and that's what that does when you think of the answers ahead of time, that helps you avoid distracting red herrings because you've already identified and you've thought about the question and you've thought of possible solutions. Now, the, the answers here might be, you know, interpretations that or might be synonyms of what you've come up with, but it helps to frame your mind before looking at what CompT is, is trying to trick you with. All right, which of the following refers to a weakness in a mechanism or technical process? Which of the following refers to a weakness in a mechanism or technical process? Now, I just mentioned to reframe your mind, I'm not sure what this is asking, so I, I would will need to ans uh, look at the questions here. Okay, vulnerability, risk, exploit, or threat. Okay, so this is kind of the definition here, and we have to think about this carefully. What f refers to a weakness? I think a weakness would be best categorized by a vulnerability. But this is the type of thing that could be, uh, when you have a threat meet a vulnerability, that's where you have risk, and a threat is uh, internal or external, environmental or man-made, something that could harm your system. And an exploit is a threat that has basically uh, been performed on a vulnerability. So it, threat, risk and exploit are very similar, I'd say. 
usually this is a specific technique to exploit a vulnerability. So I think it's vulnerability. I'm going off on a tangent here, but I think it's vulnerability. Okay. While working a coffee shop, an attacker watches a user log into a corporate system and writes down the user's login credentials. Which of the following social engineering attacks is this an example of? Okay, so this is going to be, I think, shoulder surfing when they're watching over your shoulder. So that's kind of the definition here. Shoulder surfing, dumpster diving, fishing, or tailgating. This is going to be shoulder surfing. And this is basically asking for the definition of shoulder surfing. Which of the following is the first step a network administrator should take in the troubleshooting methodology? Okay, so this is understanding CompTIA's troubleshooting methodology, which you definitely should understand for the Network Plus exam. Let me pull this up here a little higher. Uh, so the first step, I believe, is identification. Establish a plan of action. You can't do that until you understand what's going on. Document findings and outcomes, that's towards the end. Test the theory to determine the cause. That's, you have to identify, you have to develop a theory first. So identify the problem. This is going to be the first step. Yeah. So that, that corresponds with what I thought, which is great. And that's kind of how you want to do that because you can, if you didn't do that ahead of time, you might find yourself second guessing, looking at, these terms and thinking, okay, is this step before this step? It helps to understand this ahead of time or to think about it before you look at the answers. A technician is troubleshooting a user's connectivity issues and finds that the computer's IP address was changed to 169.25401. Which of the following is the most likely reason? Technician is troubleshooting a user's connectivity issues and finds the computer's IP address was changed to 169.25401. I mean, this could be, it's an interesting one. So we have to kind of pay attention to, you know, the class of the address here. Peer's IP address was changed to 254. Hmm. So let's, I'm not quite sure. It could be a number of reasons, but let's take a look here. Two or more computers have the same IP address on the ARP table. The ARP table would not track, uh, the ARP table would be more MAC addresses. So that's not, I don't think that's correct. The computer automatically set this address because the DHCP was not available. I mean, DHCP sets a private IP address automatically. That's, that's potential. Uh, the computer was set up to perform as an NTP server network time protocol. I don't think that would have anything to do with this IP address. The computer is on a VPN and is the first to obtain a different IP address on that network. Hmm. I mean, I would think it would have something to do with DHCP. This is a interesting way to say this. If you automatically set this address because the DHCP was not available. So if maybe you had a problem with your DHCP, then you reverted back to a different IP address. So I think it'd probably be Bravo. I'm gonna say Bravo. This is a way different question than all the other ones. <laughs> See, all the other ones are very straightforward. Which of the following cloud deployment models involve servers that are hosted at a company's property and are only used by that company. Okay, so we have public, private, community, and hybrid. So uh, private is going to be legacy or hosted at the company. So which of the following cloud deployment models involve servers that are hosted at the company's property, only used by that company? It's a private cloud. Private cloud, yeah. And here, public, private, community, hybrid. No red herrings here, just all four definitions. Pretty straightforward answer. Private clouds are very rare anymore. Very rare, most of them are hybrid or public. All right, which of the following kinds of target attacks uses multiple computers or bots to request the same resource repeatedly? So this is gonna be a, a type of denial of service attack, probably distributed denial of service or DDoS. All right, let's see. On path, DDoS, ARP spooking, spoofing or MAC flooding. 
to access multiple computers or bots request the same resource DDoS. Okay. So the only one I'm not sure about is that one on number eight. Let's take a look here. Is the answer key? Okay, so Alpha, Charlie, Alpha, 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 Delta, Bravo, Bravo, Bravo. So I think we got them all right. So here's my card. Uh, looks like we did it correctly. So that was good. Computer automatically set this address because the DHCP was not available. So I think that this is the only one that made sense. And this is, I had to puzzle this one out. I think this is where we can learn the most from this quiz. Because we know NTP would have nothing to do with the computer setting an IP address, um, whether it's an NTP server or not. Besides, why would a user have connectivity and this, the, the user wouldn't have connectivity issues and the user's computer would not be set up as an NTP server. Uh, two or more computers would have the same. This our tables have MAC addresses, so that's a clear differentiator. And then a VPN is not going to uh, influence an IP address that is assigned to a computer. So it's going to have to be. It had to be Bravo. It's just strange the way they worded this is a little strange, and that's what threw me off the most. But I think we did a good job, and I hope this was helpful for you. Hope this thought process or this methodology. Remember, you want to read the question, rephrase the question, and by rephrasing the question, you gain a little better understanding of the question. Then read the answers, and if need be, read the question again, which I had to do in this one. Some of these, when they're a little simpler, you can, like, well, this one was a little more tricky. Uh, this one was basically which one would approve availability, which is going to be some sort of redundancy mechanism on after power supply. So sometimes they're just definitions, uh, like the one, this is a secure protocol, very straightforward. So you can do, spend less time on those. Should be spending about a minute per question. If you do that, you're going to have enough time to devote uh, about 20 minutes for the performance-based questions on your exam. And I do recommend skipping the performance-based questions first. But I do hope this was helpful for you. If you're studying for your Network Plus exam, I hope this, this helped you out. Uh, please take a look at my other videos. If you're looking at your Network Plus exam, happy to help you with lots of performance-based uh, question breakthroughs that I go through and uh, it's example questions. So I appreciate you watching today. Thanks so much and have a great day.